Hey, welcome back. I'm George. I've been waiting on you. Look, I've got a subscribe button right here somewhere. If you would, please, that helps. Um, today we're going to do a video on wiring the Inkbird ITC 106 VH. This is a PID controller, proportional integral derivative controller that will give you the flexibility to fine tune and to manage your heating source regardless of what, what process you're using or what process you're trying to apply it to. And I say process, I'm like, okay, if you're a distiller, it's a distilling process. If you're doing bake light, it's a baking process. Um, if you're, you're running a kiln, it's a kiln process. That's what the process is. But this thing will control each and every one of those um, and everything's at your fingertips. And we're going to get to setting the parameters on a separate video, so stay tuned. That's why subscribe would help so much. Here's what we've got going on. Now this ITC 106 VH model is the one you're looking for if you're going to um, wire this to like your household current, 120 volts or 240 volts of AC. Uh, if you were going to wire it to like your car or you want to run it off of a transformer of some sort, they have a couple of other models uh, that run between 12 and 24 volts AC or DC. Now they also have one of these, it's called the ITC 106 RH. That's the one that I would stray you away from unless, unless you're operating a much less demanding process, uh, like a coffee pot, uh, which in that case you could use the ITC 106 RH. And the difference is, is it has a relay inside the PID controller as opposed to the VH model, which requires an external solid state relay to handle that large current flow. The RH, the one with the inside, it, it, it'll handle a small current flow or a very much, much lower amperage before it burns up. So that's why we say use the VH model. Get the wrong one. Look, I'll give you some advice. You never take a sleeping pill and a laxative at the same time. Huh? All right. Look, all right, here's what we got going on now. I've got this thing wired up and I've already got it plugged in, so I'll be careful not to touch too many things. Um, you've got the black wire, a white wire, and a green wire. And we know from home do-it-yourselfers right, that green wire is the ground, and the ground is a safety wire. The white wire, and now for the sake of argument, we do know that electricity and AC runs in both directions, but this is going to be the return line, just for the sake of argument and discussion. And the hot wire is our black wire. That's the one that's going to provide the 120 volts of alternating current. Now what we've done with this is we've run the black wire, let's just, let's just wire this together step by step. The black wire goes from here and I've connected it to the number one pin on the solid state relay which is located right here in the center. That's that big block. <clears throat> now from that big block you got the number one pin and then you got the number two pin. I ran a wire from the number two pin all the way over here to the top of and that would be the one with the small slice and also the screw on the side is brass that tells you it's the hot side and I ran it to that side of the receptacle. I dropped down here because these two receptacles are connected and there's another video to show you how to separate them if you want to. We're doing this the most direct route. Uh, from this silver pin, the silver screw on the side, that's the white one, which is the neutral, and that one runs all the way back here and runs right back down the cord. So we've got the break that happens. It takes place right here inside the uh, solid state relay. That's the, that's the break. Now the control of that, it's on or off based on the two connectors that are on the bottom, pins three and four. And we'll show you how that works. Now, in order to get to the PID itself and to power the PID, we needed 120 volts or up to 240 volts. We have 120 volts available. Now I used 14 gauge wire here uh, and the reason I use 14 gauge wires because I'm going to be controlling about 16 amps, 15 amps or so. If you're going to control anything more like 20 amps, go to a 12 gauge wire. But what I actually use, I use a small, like a 22 gauge wire for the PID because it only draws 0 0.04 amps to operate. So there's not a large amp or a, a power requirement or consumption to operate the PID. So why use a large wire? Plus it's a whole lot easier to maneuver with these things. So. On the side of your PID, you'll also have a schematic that'll show you and tell you where everything goes. In this particular case, this I always use as a hot. The hot wire goes from pin one, which I got it connected together, and I put that into pin number 10. 
pin number 10 on the back of the PID. And they're marked on the back of the PID. If you look at them, you can see a raised number 10. It'll show you which one of the pins number 10. And then I've got the blue wire. In the blue wire, I did the same thing, which is the neutral. See, I connected it to the white wire here. When I connected it to the receptacle, I just jumped it off of there with another small 22 gauge wire. And that goes to pin number nine on the back of the PID. So you'll see those, pin number nine, number 10 and number nine. Top and the top one and the next one, number 10 and number nine. Now, interestingly enough, your PID doesn't really care which one of those. You could put the red wire on the number nine pin and the blue wire on number 10 pin, it'll work. Or as I have it, the red wire on the number 10 pin and the blue wire on the number nine pin. So it's not polarity specific for power source. Now, it is polarity specific because it runs on a DC voltage. Uh, to control the solid state relay. And you'll notice that because on the side of your PID, it'll have a positive and a negative mark on the appropriate pins, number six and eight. And so number eight pin is the positive, And you'll notice that because on your solid state relay, it'll say number three with a positive mark next to it. Anytime you see a positive written next to something, that indicates it's polarity specific. And then we look on the side of the PID controller, and it says number eight positive. That's the number eight pin. And you'll notice on the back here, that's the one below the nine, there's number eight. We put the positive there. The negative pin is another, it's a blue wire, and I ran that from pin number six. That's written on the side of the PID. Pin number six goes to pin number four. And pin number four on your solid state relay says four, and it's got a little negative sign next to it. So you shouldn't mix them up. If you mix them up, it ain't going to work. Got it? Okay. Now, last but not least, we've got the probe, your thermocouple, the probe, the sensor that senses the different temperature. Now, this one is connected to pins number three and four, and it is also polarity specific. So... Pin number four is the positive, and I got the red wire on the positive, pin number four. And then the negative, which is the black wire here, but I got the blue thing on the end of it, is the negative. <laughs> now, what happens if you plug these in backwards? Look, guys, if you got your PID running and you grab a hold of the sensor and the temperature starts to go down, the sense temperature, the perceived value at the top starts to go down, you got it hooked up backwards. It senses in reverse is what happens. So you just switch the wires and it'll work the correct way. So if you ever get it confused. Now, how, here's how we test this, and we'll get into another video later on, but I'm gonna plug in my tester, which is my light, and my light has not come on yet, and it won't come on until, as I have the PID set, it's right now sensing 74 degrees, 74.3 degrees, and I've got it set at 70.9. So what I've gotta do is I've gotta get that the temperature down, or I just reset the PID a little bit. So I'm going to set the PID up to just roughly, uh, let's see, I'll set that sucker. We're going to set this to 74. Okay, so I've got it set at 74.9, and it's reading right now 70.5. So you'll notice that the light comes on. And the light will come on each and every time that that solid state relay is energized and you'll notice there's a red light on that that comes on and it'll energize this receptacle which I'm using a light bulb to mimic the heater element that's inside your still or inside your stove or whatever the case may be. Now as the temperature begins to rise and I'm holding this element the uh, thermocouple, you'll notice that it starts to flash. It's starting to check. It hit 74 degrees and went off, but it'll flash, and that is it's measuring the amount of power necessary to either maintain, achieve, and or maintain that temperature. So there you have it. Please, if you get an opportunity, subscribe to the channel. Um, we'd love to have you back. Leave comments. Um, we enjoy all the comments and all the viewership, and it, it really helps. And uh, we're going to put some more together here in the near future. So stay tuned to find out how to set the parameters and to fine tune your PID with your band of excellence. Until then, happy distilling.